today's video, we're testing things that aren't chocolate in a chocolate fountain. We want to try ketchup, teriyaki sauce, and fire. Chocolate fountains. They're loads of fun. I've seen them with chocolate, I've seen them with cheese, and frankly, we're not the first people to misuse these. I've seen some videos of some people trying some other stuff on there. I think I've seen several with ranch dressing, for Have example. Have you seen the, the cockatoo, though? It's probably my favorite video of the chocolate fountain, where a cockatoo is standing on the edge of one and then just slowly puts his entire head underneath the stream of chocolate. Today, we're trying not chocolate, as others have done before us, but I also haven't seen it with things that aren't edible, and one of the things we're gonna try out today is hand sanitizer. I also wanna see if it will light on fire while it's fountaining, and if it will, how long the fountain will survive before it dies from the heat. Here's the basic idea. We've got ourselves a few different chocolate fountains, and we're going to see how well they work with non-chocolate liquids. We're gonna be trying ketchup, teriyaki sauce, and hand sanitizer to see which ones will actually go through the fountain, and if it makes a good snack. The fountain itself is metal except for the piece that is feeding the liquid up through the top. It's like a corkscrew shape. You can actually kind of look at it. Oh yeah, on, on this one. Yeah, it comes off real easy. It's plastic, and you said that you couldn't find any that had a metal feeder coming up. Well, it's hard to tell because they don't always post mm -hmm. online what the parts are made of, so it's mostly just going off of the visual. So we don't know if that'll melt. I suspect it will. It will either melt or burn or something unpleasant will happen to it. But either way, I want to see if the hand sanitizer will like nicely cascade down mm -hmm. the fountain okay. and then if it will light on fire while it's doing that. Or if it's maybe too thick or too thin, like it might be the wrong consistency to flow anyway. The same can be said for our ketchup and our teriyaki sauce. I'm actually True. quite worried that ketchup is too thick and I think we're probably gonna have to thin it with water, at least if we want a nice like flow. Uh-huh, not maybe, just like blopping yeah, out. Maybe it will be able to pull it up and blob back down. And the teriyaki sauce, I actually got two, one that's quite thick mm -hmm. and then one that's very thin. So we can sort of okay. mix them together to get whatever consistency we need for a teriyaki fall. All right, well, I'll try. It's just pouring it up though, so. Yeah. You start from the top, whoa, okay. Yeah, never mind. Sounds like we're breaking it. We might be. So it's not an expensive machine. I think it's starting to. Like the ketchup at the top is just, there you go, starting to slump over. Okay. Now, we were worried about pretty much exactly this. It's too thick to, to properly run, I believe. This is awful. I love it. But it is. It is running. Like augering the ketchup up slowly. Uh, I'm thinking we uh, should try thinning it down a little. Maybe a little. <laughs> Add some water and let's try stirring that in somehow. I've never actually tried to dilute ketchup to water it down before, so I'm not sure if this works. Does water mix into ketchup well? Water mixes in, it's not oily. There we go. Yeah. So it needs quite a bit of dilution, ketchup does. Fountaining ketchup with water in it. Runny ketchup. All right, I suggest we add all the thin ones and then slowly add the thick Yep, thing. yep, start the other direction this time. Yep, it smells great. Teriyaki. So just like this, I wanna see if the liquid gets yeah. anywhere. So yeah, we can see it gets pulled about half an inch up, and then because there's gaps between the auger and the sides of the plastic, it doesn't go any higher than that. So we actually do need some level of thickness, but as we've seen with the ketchup, we can definitely have too much. Teriyaki fountain's too thin, the ketchup's too thick, but the fire fountain's gonna be just right. No matter what, it's gonna be perfect. Okay, we can see it. Climbing, climbing, will it make it all the way? I don't know yet. Oh, it's up to here. I bet it makes it out. Oh, it's at the top. <laughs> wow. The anticipation is killing me. Maybe just a little more. I wonder if the weight helps push it. Oh, climbing. Climbing, Much climbing. faster climbing. It climbed faster this time. Does that mean it has enough? You can do it. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A little bit of spill. A little bit. I think 
we need more, honestly. Just more total liquid? Yes. I think so. <laughs> I'm so happy. It doesn't taste diluted. It definitely seems thinner, but it doesn't taste diluted. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> For our teriyaki sauce, we're gonna try a few things. First up, cooked up a little bit of chicken tenders. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That is excellent. And uh, definitely a fancier way to add teriyaki to your chicken than just dipping it into a bowl. I am a huge fan of this. Like a, like a peasant. Where's your teriyaki fountain, peasant? You go for some teriyaki broccoli. Teriyaki broccoli. Terra broccoli. Now I'm actually there a fan is. of Terra celery, broccoli. but I don't know if celery is good with teriyaki. Mmm. Okay. Well, the ketchup worked okay. The teriyaki worked great. Now it's time to try hand sanitizer. This is basically a gelled version of ethyl alcohol. So I've got some in the bowl. I'm just gonna add a little bit more in here. There we go. Just turn the motor on. Oh no. hey -o. Woo! Oh, it worked so well! A gel fountain. Guys, imagine just going into your office space and just be like, oh yeah, sanitize your hands on the way in. Yep, you should just keep this in the foyer of whatever business and, and all the guests who come in can just like, just grab a little, uh, just, <laughs> just sanitizer up, grab a little blob of it. Guys, we've done an entire video on what's called the K effect. It's when a non-Newtonian liquid is sheer thinning, meaning when it's under more pressure, it gets less viscous or thinner. And what can happen is as some liquid falls on more liquid, the liquid that it's hitting, Bounces. like the impact point, yeah, it gets so thin and runny that it can actually sort of bounce off of itself. And we're actually getting a little bit of that effect in some spots where it drips down. And so we've had some of the alcohol just shoot off. It, 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 do it again. Go. It hits the alcohol below it and uh, launches off. So while I definitely do want to light this on fire, I don't want to do it inside. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons, because of it's going everywhere. The other is that I don't know if it does light, I don't know how tall of a pillar of fire we might get out of it. And I am not trying to light the ceiling on fire today. Might need something that delivers a bit more heat. Ooh, or maybe down in the dish catches first. Okay, I think down in the bottom dish has now caught. Oh, it's on fire. Yeah, it just hasn't made it up to the top yet. Oh, there it goes. Is it climbing? It's climbing a little. <laughs> Marshmallows, fire fountain. <laughs> I'm losing it, this is the best. <laughs> See, this is why you want it at a wedding is so your guests can cook their marshmallow before they dip it into the <laughs> chocolate fountain. Come, come on, come on, gotta, gotta get to the spot where the wind isn't blowing. That's not how I like my marshmallows cooked, but. Oh no, it's boiling. Ooh. No, that's not good. It's fun though. It's not good though. I didn't say good, just fun. <laughs> Guys, that's it for today. We've got tons of great videos for you to see. Click that box right there to check out one of our favorites, and we'll see you next time. Talk to you then. 